Well, this month, August, is Family History Month, and uh, there's a whole bunch of um, events going on around the place to celebrate Family History Month, one of them being a Family History Fair that's happening um, at the end of uh, of August, 26th to the 27th in, um, in Hamilton. But, um, of course, there's many tools out there now to go and research your family history and figure out um, where you came from. Uh, none, uh, often, especially in, um, I, th- I believe, in New Zealand society, we don't really hand down a lot of this knowledge. Uh, but those tools are now available to us. And one such tool, of course, is Ancestry.com.au. And uh, Brad Argent from Ancestry.com.au joins me in the Kiwi studio this morning. Good morning to you, Brad. Morning, Glenn. Uh, Family History Month. Um, has it been around a wee while? Is this a new creation? No, it's been around for a while. You know, the there's a really there's been a I suppose a real long-term interest in family history in a very small part of New Zealand, much as there has been in Australia. Yeah, and it has been for a long time the, I suppose, the hobby of those more retired or more leisured yes classes, stamps and family history <laughs> go together quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but what's happened is there's been what what I call a democratisation of history. Huh. You know, the ability now to be able to go online and get access to so much information that used to be cloistered away um, you know in archives and that's all come out now it's all it's a lot of stuff online and a lot of it's digital and you can just sit in front of a computer and type in a name and you can google it essentially yeah you know and it's it's made it so much more accessible to everybody and one of the things that's really exciting about that is it's the you know the 18 to 34 year old market that's really it's growing it's still the interest is still quite small mm. in that market but it is one of the growing markets as a lot of younger people are sort of going you know i want to get a sense of what is my connection Mm. to country to culture to the land and that's wonderful because that that means for me that means history is going to survive yeah so yeah i mean i think everyone really does want to know don't they Uh, deep down even if yeah someone says they don't you still really want to know your place (laughs) in the world right what's what's funny glenn is when you sit down with somebody uh, a younger person who might be a little bit cynical about this and you start doing it and you start building that tree and you go back a couple of generations Mm. you can see and it's what we call the aha moment you can see where they get it and they realize this is actually quite cool Mm. now a lot of the things that hook them in and i have to admit that this is this is perhaps something that i suffer from as well is i love digging up the dirt Right, I like to, I like to find because <laughs> there's always going to be dirt, isn't there? Yeah, but it's wonderful to go back and see how your how your ancestors lived and how they really lived. Because mm. we have this quite sanitised and idealised version of our ancestors as being very prim and proper and very Victorian and you know leading a very straight laced life, and we we don't think that they're human and that they're fallible. And, of course, when you have a look yeah. at history, it tells a very different story. Well, isn't that because often when we do have a record of our ancestors, it may be a photograph, and it is one of those posed, mm. you know, proper sort of photographs and they're wearing nice gear and everything, and and your whole picture, your whole idea of them is centred around this one thing that you have. Yeah, oh, look, I, th- I think that's very true. And, I, you know, I think... Proust says that the dead annex the living, hmm. and and I, I certainly think for a long time with with family history, that's that's how it's been. There's been almost this process of veneration, of okay, well we, you know we need to record this to preserve the memory of these people. Hmm. But what's happened, it, it probably in the last ten years, is that's kind of turned around a little bit, hmm. and we're saying rather than just remembering these people, which is part of what we do. This is really about a search for self. Yeah. About, you know, it's, it, there's an existential crisis happening in, in the world where we, we're trying to find a sense of meaning. And I think looking back at these records and seeing our, 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 ourselves as part of a, a link in a chain, yeah. if you like, gives us a sense of meaning. Because these days, of course, our footprints are left all over the place mm. um, digitally, <laughs> yeah, yes. uh, you know, whether it be in social media or just public records, that kind of thing. Or your own personal blog um, is, is the record of your life these days. But back then, you know, how, how much was kept? Well, when I say back then, I mean, you know, 100, 150, 200 going back further. I mean, what, what kind of records were actually kept of people? Yeah, look, the, it, it's interesting. If you, if you have an ancestor, for example, who perhaps misbehaved a little, mm. then there might There's be going more. There's be stuff. Yeah, they'll, they'll, there will be stuff. Yeah. Um, but. There is a, there is quite a lot of 
I suppose, anecdotal information that you get about an ancestor. Uh, newspapers, for mm. example, are a wonderful source. There is a great website by, by the National Library here in, in New Zealand called Papers Past, and it has newspapers going right back to the very early days up to the 1940s. Mm. And it was one of the ways in which our ancestors you know, communicated with the community yeah. is through writing letters. And you know, newspapers were a lot more, um, I suppose, parochial mm. and that there were many of them mm. and they serve smaller communities. And you find great stories in that. Mm. Uh, but, of course... The government record is where everybody appears. So electoral rolls are a wonderful source mm. of information because they place somebody somewhere at a point in time. So what does, I mean, a website like um, Ancestry.com.au, I mm. mean, what, is, what does that do? I mean, it's obviously a portal, but how, is it, how does it work behind the scenes? Yeah, what, what Ancestry does is we go around the world and we get these historic records and we digitise them. So in some cases that means converting from old microfiche or microfilm. Yeah. So you're doing then, all the leg, leg work. Uh, yeah, all the leg work, and then we index them. Yeah. So we actually create, I suppose, a, a, a searchable version of that. And what that's done is it's, it's sped up the process. So just to give you some kind of context, mm. we did the electoral rolls for New Zealand. Mm. Prior to doing that, they were available on fish, and you had to know where the person lived and then it probably took you somewhere around about half an hour to find them in the electoral roll. Now yeah. it, you type in a name and you click a button and there they are. So because we've sped the process up, we've actually made it a little bit more exciting. And I think that's hooked a lot more people. Mm. And of course, it's not just us. There are a, a number of sites out there that, that do that. If you look at the registry of uh, births, marriages and deaths, for yeah. example, their, their material, you can search their indexes online and you get that instant gratification. And then you can go in and you can order a transcript mm. of, the, of the details, which is one of the things that you need for doing it. So it's that, that process of making history accessible, I think, that has led yeah. to the growth. And I suppose the more um, information that you have that's been handed down is within your family and that knowledge that's there, the more you have of that, the easier the job is on the Ancestry.com.au side yeah. to actually put it all together. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, that, and that's one of the key things. When you're doing family history, mm. don't just dive straight into the internet. Sit down, think about what you know, find the oldest person in the family mm. and talk to them and, you know, do it today. Yeah, because they might not be yeah, around tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Talking about that, um, <laughs> we've only got a, a couple of minutes or so, but um, I gave you some information, um, you know, some births, deaths, and um, grandparents mm. and that kind of thing, names and whatnot, um, uh, and you've gone and put together um, a wee bit of a tree for me. I have. I have had a little bit of a look. Now, I got this on Sunday afternoon, I yeah, think it was. Yeah, it was quite late. Um, and I... Sp- Spent a good part of yesterday travelling, so just and all right, so I've only spent you know, maybe an hour having okay. a look at this. So just to put that in context, yeah. Now y- your your tree is is interesting. It's very it's a very typical New Zealand tree, right? Um, although I've not yet found any Maori in there, but oh. um, I wouldn't rule that out necessarily. Yeah. Particularly if you go. As far back as I think you do, yeah. I think the family might might well go back to the very early days of the colonisation of New Zealand. Yeah, then it's more likely that you would find evidence of that. It's much the same in Australia. The further back you go, the more likely you are to find convict ancestry or indigenous ancestry. Yeah. But I was I was interested in one particular branch of the family, and and it's the Ogilvies. Now, th- they there's a number of Ogilvy families in New Zealand, mm. and could be that you're connected, that they're all connected. Mm-hmm. I haven't got, been able to go back that far. But there was a, a guy, now he is your great-grandfather. Yep. A guy by the name of Albert Charles Ogilvy. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I came across, um, in this wonderful Papers Past website, um, I came across a story about him up before the magistrate. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, <laughs> he, okay. he had been, and again, this is what I was saying before, you know, it's it's these things that, that really build the, the character of, yeah. of your ancestors. Yeah. He'd been working um, in the post office and had helped himself to some of the mail. Did he just? He did indeed. 
Right. But what was really interesting about the story mm. was he hearing his father's testimony and in support of him. Huh. Um, there was a letter from his employer, so the, from the, essentially from the postmaster saying, "Wow, um, you know, he was really sorry about what he did." So there was definitely, um, you know, some remorse there. He, uh, as soon as it was found out, he was, you know, had this sense of regret about what he'd done, and you know, it was a, and it was a reasonable sum of money. Mm. You know, um, back in the period, it was around nineteen. 1910 or somewhere around that period. Mm. So it was a so reason. Yeah. Like money in an envelope or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, mm. you know, okay. a check to here, mm. you know, money to pay mm. this bill. I can see that. Is. Very tempting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it was wonderful to get that and get that sense of, um, you've got a real sense of who that person was mm. just from that snippet. So it's one thing to know they existed. It's another thing entirely. So what, what, what year are we, what, around what year are oh, we talking we, about? We're around 100 years ago. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, mm. you know, no, in in many case, in many ways, it's not that long ago yeah. at all. Yeah, and then I, I had a bit of a look at um, the Pierces as well. Yeah. Now, you suggested that they might have been from Wales. Mm. It's of course you know looking for a name like Pierce in Wales is going to look like you know, <laughs> it's it's <laughs> yeah, especially with the the Smith side of family as well, the, <laughs> well the Smith name and or but, even the Williams name. Yeah. Well, um, William Arthur Pierce married. Um, a woman called Mary Mabel mm. McGill. Mm. Now, she was actually born in Sydney, in oh, Australia, okay. in, in 1887, to Thomas and Elizabeth McGill. Mm. But she was married, they were married here in, in 1907. Right. So Mary had come out here for some reason. Now, she was born in, in Australia, but her parents weren't. Her parents were immigrants as well. Yeah. So I... You know, again, I'm trying to find out now. Well, where did they come from? Yeah. And now they had two children in Australia, mm -hmm. one of which stayed in Australia and mm. died in Australia in 1951. Mm. Uh, actually, just up the road from where I live, oh, which wow. is quite, yeah. quite yeah. odd. But um, she, so she she's come out. She's probably come out with her parents. Yeah. So then now now I need to go. Okay. Well. Yeah. Got to find this this Thomas McGill. And, and who was he and where did he die and then go back from there and see if I Because I guess for, for, for many New Zealanders doing this, they are going to go back you know, through the records of New Zealand and then suddenly, boom, they have to make the leap overseas back to Europe, don't they? Yeah, yeah. and look, yeah. It, it's, it's much the same in Australia, you know. Mm. We, and for the vast bulk of us, that, that link back to Europe is a link back to the UK. Yeah. But, you know, your connection to Australia is, is quite common. Mm. You know, there is... If you can trace your family... Back to New Zealand for you know 100, 120 years, mm. you're likely to find some kind of connection with Australia, and of course the reverse applies. You know, there's a there's been a huge passage of of people between the two countries mm. for many many years, and it still happens today. Mm. Now, one of the things that New Zealanders always have a go at us Australians about, of course, is the convicts. Yeah, and they say no, no, there's no convicts in New Zealand. We never got any convicts. Well, that's not true. You got plenty of convicts. Right. You just got them after they'd done their time. Okay, sure. <laughs> they came here to reinvent themselves. <laughs> well, um, uh, just very quickly, tell us about the um, the family history fair that's happening in Hamilton on the twenty sixth. Yeah, look, twenty sixth and twenty seventh in Hamilton and Claudeland's exhibition centre down there in, in Hamilton. There'll be a huge number of people from a variety of different flavours of family history. Mm. So family history societies, websites like Ancestry. Um, there'll be people there from the registries. There'll be people there from the library. If you're thinking about, hey, you know, I'd like to start doing this and I want to get some insight into how to do it, this is a fantastic opportunity the way to, do to get it. started because all the brains are going to be in one spot for mm. two days. It's a great way to begin. Mm. Well, I'm sure even with your, the, the, um, the digging that you've done in that hour on my family, that is going to probably spark off a whole thing throughout my family, people <laughs> getting into doing it. So um, thanks very much, Brad, for coming in on, and telling us all about it. And uh, don't forget you can check out more on all this at ancestry.com.au as well. Cheers, Brad.